Hey, hello again. Well, I'm out on the back roads of Washington State near Mount St. Helens. I'm stopped on the road, on a road that's normally closed during the winter, and I saw a sign for Iron Creek Falls, so I'm going to take a little walk and check it out. It's a quick and easy little hike down to the creek. Walking stick is nice because it is a little slippery in places. I found a beautiful place to paint, but the only problem is you have to cross the creek on some logs to get there, which is a little bit challenging carrying a, a 60 liter backpack with all my plein air gear, but I think I'll be okay. I've walked a lot of logs in my lifetime camping and hiking. Beautiful little spot here. I mean this would be a beautiful spot to paint. Nice and cool on a hot summer day. Crystal clear little creek. Which is surprising, we've been getting a lot of snow melt because of the heat wave. And the rivers are really high and kind of muddy. But this little creek is just crystal clear. Beautiful mossy rocks on the opposite side. Now the trail comes down on the, I think it's the south side of the creek. You do get a view of the falls if you kind of scramble over some fallen logs. But there's no place to stand to do a painting. So I crossed the river on these logs and found a really nice spot. Let's see if I can cross these logs without falling in. The water's not deep, I'm not worried about that. but. It would hurt. I'd rather not wade across. I don't have my wading boots on. Now the trick to walking logs one is to have your contacts in, which I don't. The other is just to not think about it too much. And don't look at the water rushing below or the drop off below. You just make yourself more nervous. And there is a beautiful waterfall. A little bit of a log scramble over here. Not too bad. Looks like a well trodden path. That's a pretty view there, too, with the mossy logs going down into the water. That is just beautiful. I love that tilted rock cliff face carved by the water. It looks like when the water's, it looks like when the creek is full, more full than it is now, there would be three lakes, the waterfall. I can stand back here and get the very top of the waterfall. Or I can stand here and get more of a landscape orientation, more of that tilted cliff. I think I like this. I like this view. I'm going to play with the composition on my iPhone a little bit and just see what really grabs me on a small scale and then I'll get set up. As always, thanks for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. I played with the composition on my iPhone a little bit. As usual, I have the one-third line sketched out 
This is a Centurion Oil Prime linen panel. I've been playing with those. They're pretty nice paint on. I think my favorite is still the, the birch that I gesso myself, but the Oil Prime linen is, is nice as well. It shows the brush strokes and you get softer edges a little easier, I think. I'm gonna go with the portrait orientation because I like keeping the focus tighter on the waterfall. Looking at the small images on my iPhone, that seem to be more striking. I can always do a larger one back in the studio based on some of the reference photos I get today. As usual, I'll start with a small brush, a little ivory from Rosemary, with a little bit of transparent oxide brown to sketch in the composition. I want to keep the larger waterfall on this one-third line and have the head of that waterfall close to this intersection. And the cool, the beautiful phthalo green. So I'm gonna use just a little bit of the phthalo blue that I have out to make sure that that pool really glows at the end. That'll be kind of a secondary point of interest down here at the bottom, but not too close to the bottom, right in this area. And then there'll be hopefully a nice misty spray coming off as well. I may have to glaze that back in the studio if I can't quite capture the effect here, wet into wet. Lots of beautiful greens in the scene, so after I do the sketch, I'll do the turpentine wash. That far background is a rich, warm shadow, browns and greens, so I'll go with transparent oxide brown above the waterfall. And then for the cliff face, there's a couple different sections to the cliff. The main section that's jutting out and catching some light, I'll go with a cadmium yellow. And then for the cliff face under that that's in the shadow, I'll go with an alizarin crimson. And then for the water as it comes toward me, burnt sienna. I'm just trying to think of colors that would look nice shining through if I left them uncovered. I'm trying to be a little more I'm trying to paint a little thinner. I'm trying not to use such thick paint. I love it when someone can get away with a, a simple stroke 
of oil paint across the underpainting. I think that's just lovely when it works. So I'm trying to think of colors that would look nice um, if I left them uncovered in the wash. And then as I paint, I'm trying to be a little more conscious about not applying the paint so thick. It's challenging when you're trying to move fast and you're in the moment and just trying to catch the scene. But, you know, there's always something you can get better at. Okay, there's the composition in, the turpentine wash. I took a brush with a little bit of turpentine and wiped away the lightest lights, the waterfall and the splashing water in the pool, the reflection of the waterfall in the creek as it comes toward us. So I'll let that set up a little bit. I'm leaving some of the streakiness and some of the splatters. Hopefully that'll add some interest and take the painting in some different ways that I, I wouldn't normally go. Some happy accidents. Now I'll start to mix up the colors. I'll start from the furthest back. The green trees, the forest above the waterfall. It's a really rich greens and browns. But I want to cut down on the chroma. I want to cut down on the color intensity just a little bit so that it pushes back. So I'll add a little bit of cerulean blue to whatever I mix there to gray it down and cool it down and push it back. I have a few colors left over from yesterday when I was painting Spirit Lake and the green and the gray I saved are pretty darn close to what I need. So that gives me a little head start. Okay, I've got some colors mixed up now. I've got some grayed out brownish greens here for the far background. And I've got some darker grays, a bluish gray and a reddish gray for the cliff face, the rock, and then a couple lighter tones of that as well. A blue and a, a red, really grayed out the rock that's showing on the cliff face and then some dark a darker reddish and a more black dark for the crevices especially right around the waterfall and then I've got some warm oranges for the moss that's growing on the rock and then a set of different greens for the shrubs and little trees that are growing out of the cliff face I tried to add a little bit of cerulean blue and a little bit of yellow ochre to everything to, to give it a color harmony. Uh, we'll see if that helps. So I'll paint the cliff face and I'll paint the, the far background. I'll leave the waterfall until the end, filling in that, that lightest light, the white of the water. For me, it works best if I leave that to the end. So after I clip, paint in the cliff face, then I'll paint in the, the water, the pool at the bottom. I'm trying to use thin paint and let the underpainting show through wherever I can.
here's what I have so far. I've got the background, I've got the cliff face, I've got the moss on the cliff, and some of the vegetation. I'm gonna stop there. I, I like what I'm seeing. I don't wanna go too far here. I don't wanna turn it into mud. I'm really being conscious of applying thin layers and it's helping. Um, it's giving cool effect, especially where you have some thick paint over some relatively thin paint and then you have some of the underpainting showing through. Um, it requires constant attention because I, my instinct is to pile on the paint. Um, but yeah, I, I'm kind of excited. It feels like a little bit of a breakthrough. So now I'll mix up the colors for the water in the pool. Toward the very back of the pool, I can just use the same colors I used for the shadows in the cliff. I'll just make it very thin and very horizontal to imply the, the flatness of the pool. One step closer is almost pure sap green. And then one step closer than that is a little bit of phthalo green with titanium white. I don't have phthalo green out, I have phthalo blue. So I'll take a little bit of phthalo blue and a little bit of Gamblin Radiant Lemon and see if I can come close to that kind of glowing green that I'm seeing. And then in front of that is a richer brown. So I think I'll just alternate between burnt sienna and transparent oxide brown and then a little bit of the of the gray colors I mixed up for the cliff face and call it good. I don't want to overwork that. And then finally I'll mix up a little bit of color for the waterfall. What I'm seeing in the waterfall is a beautiful yellow-green, almost white. It's a titanium white with just a touch of yellow-green in it. So maybe I'll take that same phthalo I mix up for the pool in the foreground and add bunch of titanium white and that'll be the, the colors I'm seeing in some of the shadows especially up higher where it's tumbling over the, the rock at the top I'm getting that little hint of green and in the middle of the fall is also toward the very bottom and then on the edges I'm getting a, a warmer mostly white slightly lavender. So I'll take a little bit of lavender that I mix up from alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue and add a bunch of white to it and I'll just brush that in. The whitest, lightest light, the highlights on the waterfall where they're spilling out flat and where it's splashing in the pool at the bottom. That looks like mostly a titanium white with just a touch of cad yellow. Alright, I've got some colors mixed up. I've got some rich greens for the water. The sap green with just a little bit of phthalo and yellow. The phthalo blue with a lot of white. I added some sap green to it just to kill some of that phthalo fluorescent glow. Phthalo is so powerful. I want it to harmonize with the rest of the colors. And then I've got some of the white water, the waterfall, water here, a white with just a touch of this phthalo green, white with a touch of cat yellow, white with a touch of an alizarin crimson lavender, and then a little darker version of this one with a little bit of alizarin crimson lavender added to kill some of the, the fluorescent green as well. I'm going to use a big brush and just try to mop this in pretty quickly. When I'm putting in the, the water, I'm going to be thinking about a flat horizontal plane. When I'm doing the waterfall, I'm going to be thinking about the water falling and splashing at the bottom. So I try to kind of make my brush strokes match the what's happening here in nature.
here's where it ended up. The sun broke through the clouds and the scene has really changed. A lot more sunlight. On the waterfall now. The light pattern on the cliff face and everything is completely different. Much higher contrast. So it's hard to judge. There's so much backlighting on the panel now too. It's hard to judge exactly how successful I was. But right before the light changed, it was looking pretty good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take it back to the studio and clean it up just a little bit. The waterfall water, I like the, the colors and the overall pattern, but it needs to be tuned up a little bit right now. It doesn't quite sit in with that cliff, but it's too bright and the lights change too much. This foreground water, the little creek coming toward me, the little creek coming toward us needs help as well. It's really rough. I just slapped it in very quickly. I do like the pool of water. I think the, the color combination is really nice and matches what I was seeing before the light changed. So yeah, really good day. Beautiful spot. Met some nice folks here. A couple guys that were doing a road trip that I talked to for a little while. Really nice time. Welcome back to my studio. I've got this 11 by 14 inch oil painting back here in my studio after a really wonderful plein air painting session. It was such a pretty spot and really such a joy to create this painting. One of those that really went well, kind of seemed to paint itself. I'm looking at it now and I do want to touch it up just a little bit. I want to add just a little bit of a blue glaze very subtle blue lavender glaze on this background to push it back just a little more. I want it to really read like it's behind this this upper lip of the cliff. I want to bring out this log just a little bit. I think it'll be interesting if it has a little more highlight coming out of the shadow and bringing the eye down this angle to the falls. I want to add just a little bit of shrubbery, some leaves, some small trees that were growing on the cliff face. I think that'll add a nice break here on the edge of the canvas. And it was there. I just didn't get to it. Um, the light changed so severely right at the end that I wanted to stop and um, not disturb the, the balance. I really liked the mood when I first got there. It was kind of overcast, so it was soft light diffuse light on everything, no real strong high contrast light. Normally I like high contrast. I like it when there's strong sunlight spotlighting or backlighting. But in this case, this scene I think was really beautiful with a soft diffuse cloudy light. I want to add a little bit of a misty effect to this waterfall. I don't want to overdo it, I don't want to overwork it, but I, in reality this waterfall was coming out more. Um, it's really thin right now. I want to build it out just a little bit more, show some of the action of the water as it falls without giving it a, an overworked feeling. I want to add some variety to this foreground water. In reality there were some really beautiful orange rocks under the water, the riverbed was kind of a warm, glowing, rocky bed. So I want to add a little bit to that. So to do that, I'm going to mix up this exact color of, of warm brown. And then I'll bring in some of these oranges, higher value, and paint wet into wet on this surface down here. It's nice and dry now. I've scraped it down. I've scraped some of the ridges off scraped any dust off and re-oiled it back in with a little bit of liquid diluted with Gamsol. This pool I may do a glaze of some warm green, a little bit of sap green and gambling radiant lemon and just add a, a band of 
a little higher value, a little lighter water right here, which is what I remember from that day. What I tried to capture, but I think I need to push it just a little further. I think I may add a little bit of green, shrubbery, trees growing out of the cliff face down here. This is just a little bit, I like it. It's got a nice color and a nice feeling of mass, the rock. But I think it needs something to stop the eye from traveling off the page, off the canvas, following the slope of the cliff. I may darken this just a little and make it more of a blue lavender to push that back. And then I can bring the, the mist of the waterfall kind of out across it. I think that might be a, a nice effect. I'd like to add just a little bit of a greenish glow down here from the reflected water hitting the face of this cliff. We'll, I'll play with that. And that should be it. it. sounds like a lot, but it's really not. It shouldn't take me long at all. And I really want to try not to overwork this one. I think it's very close to being complete as is. I'll get after it, and I'll show you what I come up with. Here's the finished painting after the studio finishing touches. Yeah, this one went pretty quick, and I, I like the end result. Let's say I added just a little bit of a blue glaze to the far background trees to push those back. I added a few highlights on this log to make it pop a little bit. I beefed up the waterfall a little by painting in. I matched the lavender shadow color of the white water and painted that in. Almost the whole waterfall and then I went over the top with the really light white water. There was a, a white with a little bit of alizarin crimson and there was a white with a little bit of cad yellow. And I just matched those colors to what I had captured that day. Darkened this just a little. I threw a deep blue lavender purple glaze over that and also on this side as well. I added a couple little bushy trees to break up that mossy face, make it match what was actually there a little bit more, and also break up this corner so that the angle didn't leave right out the side of the painting. Um, cleaned up the foreground water a little bit. I added some brighter, more orange rocks under the water. I did that by matching the color I had down and doing a really thin layer of paint over the whole thing with that and then adding those bright orange yellow rocks under the water and then following the reflections just re-establishing that reflection pattern that I captured on the day outside and that's about it went pretty well really beautiful place I'll definitely be going back there there were other spots to paint there well, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below if you like these studio critiques and a little explanation of my finishing touches. I appreciate your feedback. If you'd like to see a little better image of this painting, jump over to my website. And I'll see you in the next one.